This video will show you how easy it is to use Git for your IBM I development. This is GitHub. We're hosting it in-house. It's hosting our Git repository. That's also in-house. Everything you see is running off the IBM I. If I expand the Git repository, you'll see what we have stored in here. This is native code. So for instance, if I open QDDS source, I will see the DDS source that makes up my application. So in today's example, Git is our source control management. I've switched to the skipper perspective within RDI. This is our change management perspective. I have an application that I'll be using today, and if I look at the properties, you can see that the source control management information can be entered here within the application definition. This is telling RCAD to use Git for source control. You'll see that we have one branch within our repository at this point in time, and that one branch is the master branch. So, to begin development in Git, the first thing you do is create a branch. Let's create a new branch to develop on using GitHub. And what I'm doing here basically is just naming the branch and I'll click create. That's all it takes to create a branch within GitHub. You'll see now that I have two branches. Basically, I have the master line of code and I have a branch where I can develop a feature. If your IBM I developers are comfortable with performing this operation, they could do that. Otherwise, the branch could be created for them. When this branch was created, a webhook was fired. I've returned to RCAD Skipper, our change management perspective, to show you the results of that webhook. If I expand the application connected with that repository and expand the environments in the development area, you'll now see that a corresponding RCAD version has been created. An RCAD version is where an IBM I developer typically works. To work in a version, the developer expands the version and looks at the components. Right now, my version is empty. Using the repository for this application, I can find and locate the component that I would like to change. Once I find that component, I can do a right click on the component and then I can perform a checkout. Now, this is a typical operation for an IBM I developer. Under the covers, this is a pull operation from the Git repository. The IBM I developer is shielded from the complexity of that operation. They simply check out. Once the component is checked out, they can work on the component like they normally do within RDI. I'm doing a double click to edit the component, and then when the source opens up, I'll go ahead and I'll make a change to the source. I'll save my change, and as normal, I'll compile my change. I'd like to see it. I'd like to test it. Of course, all of RCAD's traditional support is here. When that compile happened, the system realized there was a logical file attached to the physical, it used production level source, and it created the logical in the version library. It's already attached to the physical correctly. In addition, during that operation, RCAD created a complete list of all the related items. In order to round out this version and make sure I don't cause a level check in production, click of one button will submit all of my recompilations. If I refresh the version, you'll see the result of that. Everything I need is now ready to be tested or transferred to the next environment. Now, in order to comply with Git, all the IBM I developer has to do when they're done with their change is right click on the version and export to SCM. This is the push operation. I'll click OK and I'll let the operation run. Now that the operation is complete, let's go back to GitHub and see what we see. When I look at the repository, you'll see the push from less than a minute ago from the IBM I developer. 
It's that easy. RCAD also understands different types of branches. For instance, you saw the letter designator here as X. In my setup, that tells it to create a feature branch. A few moments ago, I just created one that began with a V. That's telling the system to create a release branch. Really what you want is to not have to roll hundreds of individual features into production, but to consolidate them into a release and then roll the release into production. I've jumped back into RDI, the skipper perspective. I've refreshed my screen and you'll see the release version has been created here. The way I'm set up, a feature version cannot be transferred, a release version can. Let's take a quick look at the release version and see what's in it. If I expand the components, you'll see that the release version is empty at the moment. Here's how we load the release branch with all of the components from all the features. We'll use the pull request. When I initiate a pull request, I can target a specific branch. Instead of targeting the master, I'll target the release. I can see that I have no conflicts and I'm able to merge, so I'll create the pull request. Once the pull request is created, I'll go ahead and actually perform the merge. So, this is merging the feature onto the release. I'll attempt the merge. There'll be no conflicts. The merge will occur. And once again, we'll fire a webhook. So back in our CAD skipper to take a look at the results of that webhook firing when we did that merge, if you look at the version, if you look at its components, the components now contain what happened in the feature branch. You can now merge any number of features into this version. This version will collect all of those changes and then you transfer the version to where it needs to be. It's that simple to use Git for source control with RCAD. You've just seen how easy it is to use Git as a single source repository for all of your IBM I source code. For more information on how you can use Git for your source control management, please call us or visit us at www.arcadsoftware.com. Thank you.